let's talk about painting eyes with watercolor. It's the first thing that anyone notices no matter how colorful or complex your composition may be. So it's very important to get it right and in this video I will share all my favorite tips and observations from the past two years of tutorials so you can see in real time and pick up some helpful tips and techniques for your own watercolor practice. Many of these compositions you will find on my Patreon channel in full along with the outlines but today it's all about the eye techniques so let's go through them one by one. I always tend to slow down and hold my breath when painting the eyes, usually switching to a size zero brush with a fine tip. No matter what your style is, loose, decorative or realistic, you will most likely need at least two layers of color to capture the eye shape. This is the most important watercolor tip I have to share here because it's so commonly overlooked. Unlike other mediums where you can switch from dark to light colors, with watercolor we paint only light to dark. So your first layer should be very light and watery and contain the colors of the iris. If the eye is black or looks black and dark in the reference photo, I usually do a very light underpainting layer using transparent blue or purple. My favorite pigment for this is Thylo Blue Green Shade. Mine is from Quar, but you can go with any transparent color. And your next layer will be much darker and I usually add definition using darker blue or purple. Make sure your first layer is completely dry and start just a few shades darker than your first. Paint around your highlights, see if you like it and don't rush. We can't erase watercolors, only lift them which is not ideal so you may even want to wait and come back for the third and darkest layer later on. But try not to start with your dark colors first, build your values gradually and you will have much more control and dimension in your work. It's important not to neglect the area around the eye, whether you're painting a bird or an animal, there are usually some shadows and wrinkles around the eye and the eyebrow area. Look closely at your reference photo, notice the direction of light and try to capture these shadows with gentle strokes so you can create a more realistic setting, otherwise the eyeball will look like it's simply floating in space. For example, if the source of light is coming from the top, the darkest shadows will be under the eyebrow and on the lower lid. If my paper is big enough and I have some room, I sometimes start by placing a few dots of masking fluid to protect the white highlights on the eye. That way I can paint with darker color over the white highlights and erase the fluid later on when my painting is done. Having white highlights really helps us create a realistic shape. It's a small but very important detail that works every time like magic.
The skin around the eye, if you're painting a human or an animal, can be tricky and you don't want it to look too pink. I find that Perlin Violet, mine is from Daniel Smith, works the best for this part. It's a natural brownish pigment that captures the skin tones. It doesn't look too striking and can be used for darker outlines at full saturation. Sometimes there is enough room to include lots of details, like on this Scarlet Ibis from our last week's tutorial. In this case, you don't need masking fluid. Simply paint around the white highlights with the tip of your brush. Try adding more than one highlight. I love arranging them in small clusters around the pupil, following the natural curve of the eyeball. Like to position the highlights slightly off-center, closer to the upper lid, since the source of light is usually coming from above, so that's where it's appropriate to have that bright white dot or maybe even two. always great to have some variation of colors for the iris, so try playing with combinations of cool and hot pigments like blues and oranges and keep it very light before you start working on your outlines. Sometimes it may be difficult to paint around the white highlight or maybe you don't want to use masking fluid to protect the white paper. In this case, I wait until the eye is finished and then I add a little white dot using white gouache. This tiger was very small and I couldn't add a lot of detail, but a little white dot in the end is always a nice touch. I recommend not using white watercolor. It's a transparent pigment and will likely absorb the colors underneath, so your highlight won't stand out as much. White gouache, which is opaque watercolor, works a lot better for this. I avoid black pigment straight from the tube. It looks way too harsh to me. My pigment of choice for the darkest colors is usually indigo, and it blends perfectly with blue underpainting, so you get a beautiful range of values. Of course, using black is totally fine. It will give you the highest contrast, just maybe a bit less natural, so keep that in mind. Let me know in comments below, what is your go-to dark color for painting eyes? Do you use black straight from the tube? Do you mix your own dark color? Or is there any special pigment that you prefer that's different from my favorite indigo? Sometimes it's not the eye area, but the area around the eye that contains the most exciting color variations. Tropical birds especially have a wide range of bright colors, and if you want to capture them, work in circles around the iris. Synthetic brushes in size 0 or 00 work very well because they're stiff and provide more control, even for the tiniest details. If you're working with natural brushes, you can go a few sizes up and still maintain the precision. Some more traditional birds that we have in North America are not that bright, but look for opportunities to bring attention to the eye area. If you painted this partridge in the pear tree with me back around Christmas time, you may recall I used a very 
vibrant coral around the eye and the beak to accentuate that small area and draw more attention to it so it won't get lost in the sea of brown feathers. I used quinacridone red and quinacridone coral. Notice the details on the eye and the beak are much more refined compared to the larger feathers on the body of the bird. The more details and contrast you add, the more focus you will bring to each area you paint. And of course, a splash of that vibrant coral helps a lot. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It almost took me forever, but I'm really happy I was able to pull together all these bits from my painting videos over the years. I hope you picked up some useful tips, maybe learned something new that you can incorporate in your work. Many of these compositions you will find on my Patreon in real time start to finish along with black and white outlines, so you can check that out as well. And if you know someone who may find these tips of value, do share this video. It really helps my channel. Of course, like and subscribe. I appreciate your support and I will see you next week with more watercolor tips. Thank you.